the film opens with the character of Frank Martin, a retired special forces operative turned skilled mercenary and driver. Currently residing in the south of France, he earns the nickname the transporter for his line of work. His latest assignment involves transporting three individuals from a private bank to a specified location. However, he soon discovers that his employers are armed bank robbers. Frank's professionalism allows him to remain unfazed by their criminal activities, focusing instead on fulfilling his contractual obligations and receiving his payment. Adhering to three strict rules, never altering the deal, avoiding personal details, and not inspecting the cargo, Frank prepares for the task. The presence of a fourth robber contravenes the original agreement. When informed that he can only accommodate three passengers, Frank decides to abort the mission despite being threatened by the gang's leader. He argues that any additional weight would compromise the efficiency of his meticulously planned escape. Under pressure as the police close in, the gang leader eliminates one of his own, reducing the number to comply with Frank's stipulations. With the obstacle removed, Frank accelerates away, showcasing his exceptional driving skills. He expertly navigates through narrow passageways and evades obstacles, ensuring the police cannot catch up with them. After successfully completing the delivery of the criminals, their leader, impressed by Frank Martin's professionalism, offers him a bonus for an additional job to Avignon. However, Frank declines, choosing instead to return to his residence on the French Riviera. Upon arrival, he meticulously cleans his vehicle and switches the license plate, revealing a hidden stash of alternate plates he uses for his assignments. Later, Frank watches a news report detailing the capture of the thieves, his former clients, who were apprehended while trying to escape with a less skilled driver. This sequence is followed by a visit from Inspector Tarkany, who questions Frank about his black BMW suspected to be the getaway car in the robbery. Without concrete evidence, Tarkany is forced to leave empty-handed. Shortly thereafter, Frank is contacted by a new client seeking his expert services. They meet under the cover of night, and Frank is hired to transport a 50-pound package to an individual named Darren Betancourt with the stipulation of a $40,000 payment up front, which the client accepts. The following day, the package is securely placed in Frank's trunk, ready for transport. While en route to fix a flat tire, Frank notices the package in his trunk moving unexpectedly, compelled by the unusual activity. He violates his own rule and opens the package, only to find a Chinese woman named Lai, who is chained and gagged. After offering her water, he resumes his journey but Lai's persistent knocking from inside the trunk forces him to stop. She communicates her need to use the bathroom, leading to a momentary escape attempt by Lai, which Frank quickly thwarts. Feeling a mix of responsibility and pity, Frank tries to manage the situation discreetly. However, their interaction catches the attention of two police officers. In a bid to avoid detection and further complications, Frank incapacitates the officers and places them in the trunk alongside a now unconscious lie, ensuring their silence as he completes his delivery. Upon reaching his destination, Frank hands over the package to Betancourt, denying any knowledge of its contents when questioned. Despite his earlier experiences, when offered another job by Betancourt involving the delivery of a suitcase conveniently along his return route home, Frank accepts. Taking a brief respite, he purchases food and beverages for the incapacitated officers in his trunk, aiming to manage the delicate situation he's found himself in. However, upon his return, a sudden explosion destroys his car, tragically killing the officers concealed within the trunk, marking a dramatic and unforeseen escalation in Frank's otherwise meticulously controlled world. The bomb that detonates intended to assassinate Frank was clandestinely placed inside the briefcase given to him by Betancourt aimed at permanently silencing him regarding the cargo he had transported, and since by this betrayal Frank storms Betancourt's stronghold, engaging in a fierce confrontation that leaves many of Betancourt's henchmen either dead or severely injured. In the aftermath, while commandeering an escape vehicle, Frank stumbles upon Lai once again bound and gagged in the back seat. Initially, he leaves her in the middle of the road, still restrained, but his conscience soon gets the better of him. He returns for Lai, bringing her to his home where he offers her food and a safe place to rest for the night, with the expectation that she departs come morning. As the night progresses, Lai secretly investigates Frank's belongings, uncovering evidence of his past as an Air Force serviceman and a highly skilled combatant. Through her findings, Lai starts to see Frank not just as her captor, but as a fundamentally decent individual caught in complex circumstances. Meanwhile, Betancourt, in his quest for retribution, visits a surviving associate in the hospital to identify his assailant. Upon learning that Frank was responsible for the assault on his domain, Betancourt coldly eliminates the informant, ensuring that no loose ends remain that could link back to him.
This act of ruthless cleanup highlights Betancourt's determination to protect his criminal enterprise at any cost, setting the stage for a deeper conflict between him and Frank. Inspector Tarconi revisits Frank's home just as La is preparing breakfast, harboring suspicions about Frank's involvement in the recent car fire and the discovery of deceased police officers in the trunk of his burnt vehicle. Frank concocts an alibi claiming his car was stolen while he was in the vicinity, a story met with skepticism from Tarconi. Lai intervenes, corroborating Frank's story by posing as his chef and newfound girlfriend, which despite Tarconi's doubts, leaves him without concrete evidence to proceed further, prompting his departure from Frank's property. Frank then insists that Lai leave but their confrontation with reality is swift as Betancourt and his men launch a violent assault on Frank's residence. In response, Frank secures Lai's safety amidst the chaos. The situation escalates dramatically when Betancourt commands a missile strike on Frank's home. Narrowly escaping the attack, Frank and Lai dive into an underwater channel, previously equipped by Frank for such emergencies, and swim to a secondary safe location. The following day, both are brought to the police station for questioning by Inspector Tarconi regarding the attack on Frank's house. Frank maintains a cover story of swimming in the sea with Lai at the time of the assault, leaving him ostensibly unaware of the attacker's identity. Tarconi, still dubious of Frank's narrative, is forced to cut the interrogation short upon receiving a summons from the police commissioner, leaving the investigation unresolved and adding another layer of tension to Frank's increasingly complicated predicament. Seizing an opportunity while Tarkani is momentarily absent from his office, Lai accesses his computer to extract crucial information about Betancourt, which she promptly shares with Frank. Given the lack of substantial evidence against them, Tarkani is compelled to release Frank and Lai from police custody. In the wake of their narrow escape and presumed dead by Betancourt, Frank aspires to cease his entanglements with Betancourt's criminal activities, rebuild his villa, and embark on a fresh chapter of his life. He advises Lai to distance herself from Betancourt as well, to avoid further jeopardizing their safety. Lai reveals to Frank that Betancourt is engaged in human trafficking, holding 400 Chinese individuals captive within shipping containers, including her own family, intending to enslave and sell them. Moved by Lai's plight, Frank resolves to aid her in rescuing her family. Upon arriving at Betancourt's office, Frank confronts and overpowers Betancourt, holding him at gunpoint, while Lai searches for documents related to her family's whereabouts. In a twist, Betancourt alleges that Lai's father, Kwai, is not only involved in human trafficking, but is also his business partner, suggesting that Lai had deceived Frank. However, the situation intensifies as Kwai and his associates arrive. Contrary to Betancourt's implications, Lai turns her weapon towards her father, only to eventually succumb to his authority and disarm herself. As Kwai's men capture Frank, Betancourt coldly remarks that the container actually holds 395 individuals, not 400, hinting at the depth of their trafficking operations and the complex web of deceit entangling Frank and Lai. Tarconi, acting on information from his office computer, intervenes at Betancourt's office, finding Frank incapacitated. Confronted by accusations from Kwai and Betancourt against Frank, Tarconi takes a bold step by offering Frank a chance to escape custody, posing as a hostage to expedite Frank's release, understanding that Frank's freedom is key to resolving the crisis more swiftly than the police could. Frank, now on a determined quest to halt the human trafficking operation, tracks Betancourt and his gang to the Marcetal docks, aiming to intercept the shipping containers. His efforts lead to a fierce confrontation and despite his valiant attempt to halt the trafficking by boarding a truck, he is overpowered and rendered unconscious by Betancourt's men, escalating the conflict and setting the stage for a dire standoff. In a dramatic culmination of events, Frank faces a formidable challenge against Kwai's skilled thugs armed with lethal weapons and Betancourt's top fighter, a formidable opponent. Through a display of exceptional combat skills, Frank overcomes them all, forcing Betancourt to send additional armed forces after him. In a desperate move, Frank evades capture by plunging into the ocean, then commandeers an old car in pursuit of the truck carrying the container with the captives. As the car breaks down, Frank urgently heads towards a farm, spotting a small plane. He coerces the pilot at gunpoint to follow a specific truck on the highway. Closing in on the truck, Frank daringly parachutes from the plane onto the vehicle, quickly subduing the driver. A fierce showdown ensues when Betancourt attempts to intervene, ultimately resulting in Betancourt and his henchmen being fatally ejected from the moving truck by Frank, bringing an end to their reign of terror. Securing the container truck, Frank relocates it to a secure area to release the captives. However, the tension escalates as Kwai, aiming to erase evidence of his crimes, confronts Frank at gunpoint and orders the execution of his disobedient daughter, Lai, along with the slaves. 
In a twist of fate, Lai takes a stand against her father, saving Frank by fatally shooting Kwa. The arrival of Inspector Tarconi and the police marks the operation's conclusion, with the authorities liberating the individuals trapped in the containers. Frank is lauded for his heroic efforts in dismantling the human trafficking network. The narrative closes on a note of resolution and injustice, with Frank's actions significantly impacting the lives of those he fought to save, and Lai making a pivotal decision that alters her path forever.